The scale of this movie is unprecedented, and it was the most expensive film made to this point. Selznick paid uh, Mitchell $50,000 for the screen rights, which doesn't sound like very much, but if you adjust for inflation, it's about $800,000. The cast had nearly 60 leading or supporting roles. It had 2,000 extras. They built 90 sets, which consumed a million board feet of lumber. Production and advertising costs exceeded $4 million. Adjusted would be $62 million. And the initial cut was six hours long. So be grateful. <laughs> <clears throat> now, lots of money was spent to make the movie's sets and costumes conform to Margaret Mitchell's extremely detailed and supposedly well-researched book. She, she actually paid attention and tried to research what the weather was like when Sherman invaded Atlanta, right? Incredibly, uh, it got many of the details uh, right, not all of them, as we'll talk about. Um, so they wanted to pay all this, pay attention to the, to the details of the sets and the costuming, in part because many of them would have read Margaret Mitchell's book, many of the fans would have, and partly because Margaret Mitchell was standing right there watching them as they did this. Uh, she insisted on authenticity from the film. And Selznick himself uh, it stated over and over again that he wanted complete historical accuracy for Gone with the Wind, at least in some areas. Right? So he hired a Southern dialogue coach, an etiquette advisor, an expert on Civil War architecture and art. Right? The costume designer spent time in Atlanta museums collecting pieces of cloth that he then had duplicated by a textile mill. Ultimately, the women's costumes cost $100,000 to make and another $10,000 to wash during the filming. It's amazing this movie ever got made. Right? It had three dire different directors, two of them working on the project at the same time. It had 17 different screenwriters. Even an elderly F. Scott Fitzgerald pitched in at one point. And it had conflicts between seemingly everyone on set, including Vivian Lee and Clark Gable, the two lead actors uh, who really hated each other. Right? Um, it also faced a great deal of pressure from Roy Wilkins of the NAACP on the outside and from Hattie McDaniel, who played Mammy, and Butterfly McQueen, who played Prissy, on the characterizations of black figures in the film. As Jim Cullen has noted, ultimately the movie that emerged is slightly less racist, slightly less classist, and slightly less feminist than the book that Mitchell wrote. Now, when, while most reviewers loved the film when it came out, but film scholar Bruce Chadwick has noted uh, that even then, a few of the reviewers had concerns with its historical portrayal. One of the reviewers at the time went so far as to note that Gone with the Wind needed to be focused on simply because, quote, it is an overinflated example of the usual false movie approach to history. That sounds like my kind of guy. 